Hello everyone, welcome to Business Analytics Programming. Today, we are going to introduce some additional material that are actually are not part of the textbook, but those are very useful uh, for future uh, data analytics um, work. Today, we are going to introduce to NumPy and SciPy. In previous material, we learned list and dictionary are two major data structures in Python. One of the big advantage of NumPy is that it makes it easy to handle vectors, matrix, and multiple dimensional arrays, data structure, and the efficient operation among these data structures. This data structure are the foundation to many Many of the data and analytic packages, such as Pandas and Scikit-Learn, we're going to cover later. Uh, but today, we will focus on NumPy and SciPy. For NumPy, uh, more detail can be found at uh, the official um, Quick Start um, tutorial at the NumPy's website. Uh, today, we will only cover a little bit of the introduction and more, for more details, please refer to the official uh, tutorial. So to use NumPy module, we need first to import NumPy as NP, that is what people usually name the NumPy module in their code as NP. And uh, there are a lot of functions in uh, NumPy that we can leverage. For example, if we want to create a um, one-dimensional array, then we can use the N uh, NumPy's arrange function, which start from the first number and uh, the next number, and with the incremental value of the third number, which is actually very similar to the list. Um, in, in addition to the one dimension, we can also create two dimension, three dimensional um, matrices or arrays. For example, uh, zeros is going to create a matrix or contains all zeros for the dimension defined here, which is two by three. And uh, the, the ones function is going to create, create a, a multiple dimensional array with a dimension defined here, here it is actually three dimension, so three by two by two. So as you can see, uh, we can easily create one, two, and three dimensional arrays uh, very easily by using the uh, NumPy uh, library. Uh, on the other hand, we can also change the shape of arrays very relatively easily as well, as for example, uh, we create an array called the ARR, uh, which has 100 elements, which from 0 to uh, 99, 100 elements, which is a one-dimensional array, as shown here. Uh, but we can change its shape by using the reshape method for an NP array, and we want to convert a one-dimensional 100 elements vector into a 10 by 10 matrix, two-dimensional matrix. It can be easily done by using the reshape method for the array uh, that we just defined. Okay, so by doing that, uh, the ARR2 uh, array is going to be a 10 by 10 matrix. So as you can see, it is 10 by 10. Um, so the efficient operation about NP array data structure uh, is usually actually involves the broadcasting uh, from one element to all the element of the array. For example, if we already have a two uh, 10 by 10 two dimensional array defined in ARR2, now we want to do a ARR2 plus 100 and save the result into AR3. The result is going to be every element of AR2 will be added by 100, uh, 100. So we get the AR3 still going to be a 10 by 10 two-dimensional matrix, uh, but with uh, the number, uh, every element of the number um, added by, uh, by another 100. 
indexing and slicing an array, uh, np array, uh, is very similar to the list, which is usually uh, always beginning with the in the indices always beginning with uh, begin with zero. Uh, using the typical n1 uh, comma n2 logic, uh, uh, where n1 is a starting index and the n1 is the ending index and not included. Um, so we can actually leave one or both out if n1 and n2 are both not specified, which means the entire range of that dimension. If only n1 is specified, which means that that specific element of that dimension will be chosen. So this ARR3, we use the square bracket for element um, uh, selection, is 3 and column which means a single column, uh, the single row will be chosen. Uh, all the columns uh, for that row will be chosen. Uh, if we use ARR3, uh, column 3, which means we're going to select a particular uh, a column. We can also select a subset of a 3 by 2 matrix by using uh, both this expression in both row and columns. Uh, we can also use a Boolean index. Uh, for example, we can define the index as for ARR3, any of the elements that's larger than 150 and less than 180. We're going to choose that element. For those elements, uh, anything uh, is going to be within that condition, the index will be true, is that subset. So uh, we can select the subset and then look at the values and for other operations. Uh, NumPy also provides some simple statistics and random number generators, such like uh, we can use the random normal function to create uh, 100 data points uh, from a normal distribution with mean 2 and standard deviation 0.2. Then we can do this element by element operation. We each element of the x will be uh, multiplied by itself and create a new variable called y. And we can find out y's mean, standard deviation, and variance. Those are the method for a NP, uh, NumPy array. And we can see we can easily calculate uh, those uh, numbers. The uh, NumPy provided a lot of different kind of uh, operation like sine, cosine, exponential, etc., uh, which are not defined in a typical um, Python environment. So if you need to do some numerical computations and just uh, refer to NumPy's uh, official uh, user guide, and very likely you're going to find the function uh, you're looking for. SciPy, on the other hand, is a collection of numerical libraries, more complicated than simple computation, uh, such as uh, uh, optimization, interpolation, integration, statistical distributions, and many, many more. The list of functions in SciPy can be found in the SciPy official uh, website. And here, uh, I just use one simple example to see how we can do uh, one dimension interpolation using SciPy's uh, interpolate uh, packages, the so interpolate 1D function. For example, we create a uh, x variable, which is basically from 0 to 10 pi, and the np.pi is the pi, 3.14. Uh, 1, 5, etc., etc., is from 0 to uh, 31.4 something with the incremental 1.5. So we're going to create a vector from 0 to around 30 by using uh, the uh, uh, by using the uh, um, the np range function, and we create another variable y, which is the cosine the, the cosine of x. And the x, the value of x and y are shown right here. This is the x, this is the y, and it is just discrete. So we have value from 0 
1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, etc., etc. And if you want to know anything in between, like 1.2, what will be the value of y when x equal to 1.2? Of course, if we do not know it is cosine function, uh, what we can do is actually using interpolation. Interpolation, uh, we can actually um, using the interpolation interpolate 1D function with the input x and y and what kind of interpolation we want to use. We're using linear. And in this case, we define a interpolation function called f linear. So for any of the uh, intermediate values we want to know the y value, we can use a function. For example, from 1.5 to 3, uh, we have some incremental values of x, basically is 1.5, 1.75, etc., etc., to 2.75. We want to know what might be a good approximation to the y value for those x values, and we're going to call this f linear function, which is already um, contain the information for interpolation of x and y's relationship. So uh, we just plug, plug in the f linear function with the uh, parameter of x i n t, which is uh, during the two um, numbers, 1.5 and 3. And then we can see uh, those two numbers are printed out. This is the x and this is the y. Here I'm using a zip function. Basically, I want to show uh, those two uh, vectors uh, side by side. Uh, have a better illustration. So yes, so when x equal to 1.5, as expected, uh, the value is 0 0.0707. When it is 1.75, uh, in the original function we have, we do not have that value, but based on the linear interpolation between 1.5 to 3, that number become negative 0 0.10. And because when uh, x equal to 3, it's become 9, negative 0 0.909. So by using that, uh, we actually can find out the interpolation of any values for any functions that, uh, 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 that we want to do for one-dimensional case. We can also do two-dimensional and more complicated interpolation cases. So this is just one example that what SciPy can help us. And there are a tons of different kind of functions and libraries available for us to do optimization, interpolation, integration, statistical distribution, clustering, etc., etc. Many, many useful functions. And if you are interested in that SciPy applications, just go to the uh, SciPy webpage. There will be some tutorial materials, more completed, uh, more comprehensive tutorials to help you understand NumPy and SciPy. That's all for NumPy and SciPy. Thanks. Bye.